Hey everyone, welcome back to another Go With The Flow, the series where I teach you a little bit about ServiceNow Flow Designer with as few video edits as possible. Now, one thing I love about Flow Designer is the error handler function, which you can see right here. I really like the idea of sending an incident to the ServiceNow team, like I do here, where I've created a task action, then I'm using the table incident, and I'm populating the short description, the assignment group, and the description with stuff that will help me solve the flow problems. Now, there's two things I've always disliked about this. Number one is that I always have to create these manually. And number two is that there's no way to find out what the actual flow name is from the arrow handler. So I'm typically doing stuff like copying the flow name and then pasting it manually into the short description of the incident that I'm creating. Now, thanks to a ServiceNow developer named Jonathan Crosby, whose LinkedIn will be in the description below, be sure to check him out. He's showing me the way that I can find out the name of the flow that has failed so that the incident can get created and named automatically. And now we can have a universal subflow. We don't have to build this task every single time. We just build it once in the subflow and we add the subflow to every flow that we want error handling. <laughs> So at the end of this video, we will have a subflow and that subflow will create an incident that contains the name of the flow that failed. It will contain the code and the message that the error handler gives us. And for bonus points, it will give the ServiceNow admin team a link in the work notes to actually get to the failed flow context. Nice. Here we are on a subflow. I'm calling it the error handling subflow. And with subflows, you have the opportunity to create inputs and outputs. An input is something that will be prompted when you use this subflow on another flow, just like you do with any other actions. When you're doing lookup records, it's asking you for the tables and conditions. When you use this subflow, it's going to ask you for anything that you've defined inputs for. So we're gonna define two inputs. One is gonna be code, and I happen to know that that is an integer. And we're also going to have message, which I already know is a string. Now, I'm also going to define a flow variable really quick. And the intention of this variable is to figure out what the context ID of this subflow that's running is. So we know the subflow ran. That means you should have an entry in the sysflow context table. And we want to know what the ID of that record is. So we're going to call this flow variable this context, and it is going to be a string as well. Now you see in my flow variables that becomes available for me to use throughout my flow. If you have flow outputs, that means your subflow will have data pills that you can use in the main flow that calls it. This flow does not need any outputs because it's just going to do something and be done. So the first thing we want to do is set the value of that flow variable with a script. So we're going to go into our flow logic and we are going to set flow variables. We're going to pick the variable we want in this context and we're going to use the script builder here and I'm going to paste in a script. Now what this script does is it goes and it gets the context ID, the sys ID of the sys flow context of this triggered subflow. The important thing to remember is that it's just an ID. It's not the whole record. So we're going to take this value and we're going to go do a lookup so that we know the full record of the sysflow context of this subflow. So we've set the flow variables. We're also going to add a good annotation because we're good stewards of our flow. Find the sys ID of this subflow's sysflow context. And we're going to say via script. Now that we've got the context ID, we're going to use it to do a lookup for the entire sysflow context record. So we're going to add an action. We're going to use the lookup record action. Its table is going to be sysflow context. And we want the record where the sys ID is equal to our flow variable, this context. Let's be sure to annotate it because we're good stewards of our flow. Find the sysflow context for this subflow. Okay, so the problem is that we have got the, co the full context record for a subflow that has run, but how do we get to the parent flow? Now, if you look at the sysflow context table, you will see that there is this column called source record. And source record is a reference to another sysflow context of a flow that is called this subflow. So every subflow is triggered by a flow. 
and it's the source record that stores it for us. So we're gonna do another lookup in order to find the sysflow context record for our source. So we're just gonna add another action. It's gonna be another lookup record. It's gonna be on the same table, sysflow context. And this time we're looking for one where the sys ID is equal to the sys ID of the source reference of the number two lookup that we did, right? So in, in, in step number two, we looked up the entire flow context for the subflow. And so we know that the source record sys ID is the actual flow context for the main flow. So we're gonna go into the flow engine context record and we are going to get the source record. And we're gonna be done with that. And let's annotate it because we're good stewards of our flow. Find the sysflow context for whatever flow fired this subflow. Now that we have the sysflow context of the main flow that made this all happen, now we wanna go ahead and create an incident and send that to the ServiceNow team. So we're gonna to go to action, create task. This is gonna be on the table of incident. And let's start adding some values. We know we want to assign this to the ServiceNow admin team. And we want to make sure that they know exactly which flow failed. So let's say short description, flow failure for now. How are we going to find the name for that? That's easy. We've already looked up the flow context. So let's go to that. And it has a column called name. And that is the name of the flow that has been fired. Now let's also go to our description and put some handy stuff in there. Now you remember it's the main flow whose error handler holds all the information. Remember at the very start of this, we had flow inputs where we're asking for the code and the message. That's what the parent flow is going to send us. So let's put code and message in our description and we'll take our flow input of code. We'll drop that into description, flow input of message. We'll drop that into the description and we are almost done. A lot of people would leave it right here, but since we want to make things as easy for our ServiceNow admin team as possible, we want to load our work note in with a URL so that they can just click and go to that workflow context. I've done a couple videos on how to put pretty hyperlinks into emails and journal fields. You can check up in the corner. There's gonna be a preview up there. Highly advise you check those out. And before we do that, I just want to show you how I know this can work. So we're gonna go look at our flow engine contexts. And if you actually look at one of these, you'll notice that the flow context record has this UI action called open an operational view. Now, if you click that, it pulls open the flow designer interface and shows you the context of that failed run. And wouldn't that be handy for the admin team to have? So to figure out how they did it, I just right clicked and edit the UI action. And all they're doing in the UI action is using this window.open and they're going to this part of the URL. They're opening up the flow designer page with operations context and the ID of the context and they're opening up in a new tab. We can do that just as easily using the code tags inputting into the work notes. So I'm back in my error handling subflow. I've got the work notes up, I'm scripting it and I'm gonna use this script. The first thing we need to do is find the sys ID of the main flow's context. And we did that with our number three lookup here, but we can't really drag the data pills into our script. So you can do that by building out like FD underscore data dot, the th third lookup record dot, the record itself dot sys ID. Okay, that's how we figured out how to get the value in script. So that takes some getting used to, but now you know how to do it. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna build a simple ahref. We're gonna go to that area that the UI action sends you to. We're gonna drop the lookup sys ID in because that's the context of the flow we wanna look at. And then we're gonna say target equals blank, which takes it to a new tab. And then we are going to give it a friendly name, go with the flow in a new tab. And we're gonna give it a friendly name go to the flow context. So we've gone ahead and saved and published this error handling flow. Just a quick review. We declared a flow variable called this context, and that is to figure out what is the sys ID of the context of this fired subflow. We use a script for that. Then we did a lookup to find the full record of this subflow context. Then we did another lookup to look for the full record of the source record 
of the subflow. And then we created an incident which populated the short description with the actual flow name, which we got from a script. We populated the description with the code and messages that the main flow sent us via parameters. And then we created a work note that is gonna provide a hyperlink to the flow context. Let's go back to our just some flow. Now, here's a case where we're gonna to have to say goodbye to our formerly completely manual error handling incidents. So we're gonna to go to subflow, error handling, subflow. Now you'll see that it's asking us for the code and the message. Why is it doing that? Because we define in the subflow two inputs called code and message. Let's input that with the similarly named data pills from the error handler. So let's just feed code into code. And let's feed message into message. All right, let's give it a shot. Hit test. I'm gonna pick a random incident. Now this flow is built to fail. I'm not gonna go into details about how I made it do that but this flow will indeed fail and therefore cause the error handler to trigger. Let's view the execution details. So you can see that it's caught some errors and it has successfully run the error handling subflow. Let's open that context. So it's completed all the subflow actions successfully and it's created the task. Let's see that. It's created INC 0010212. Let's go ahead and click on that. Let's open the record itself. It has assigned this to the ServiceNow admin team. Its short description is flow failure for just some flow. So it's determined that name automatically. That's awesome. And it's put our code and the message of the error. And if we check out the work notes, we see this go to flow context. And if I click that, it opens up the flow context for that uh, main flow that errored out. So there you have it folks. In under 15 minutes, we created a universally applicable subflow that does automatic error handling and you can make it do whatever you want. We used an incident and we used hyperlinks to get us to the actual flow context. Now your ServiceNow admin team can have everything they need to both automatically detect flow failures and go directly to the context of the failure. Hope you found something useful in there and I will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the emailed picture here.